sweet coffee. Lifeblood of every early morning streamer. <laughs> I make no bones about it. This is tough. This is tough to do. But you know, and people say, geez, T, are you nuts? Are you freaking nuts getting up this early in the morning? Is there anybody watching you? The answer is yes. This is where I found my audience. This is where I found my audience, you know, waking up, uh, waking up in the mornings. And it's been fun. It's been fun. I enjoy, I enjoy the early morning stream. Um, so, a little quick uh, trivia about me. Uh, along with uh, being a science fiction fantasy writer and uh, the author of uh, Twitch for Dummies, which, if you go, is that really a thing? Believe it or not, yes. That is a thing. I actually have, uh, I'm the writer of Twitch for Dummies, so I can technically say I wrote the book on Twitch. <laughs> Technically, I wrote the book on Twitch. Um, does not mean I know everything. Does not mean that I, I am I am an oracle. But if you got questions about 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 it, by all means, reach out to me. Ask me anything. Uh, I I love talking shop. I've been at this for about uh, coming up on two years now. Uh, it'll actually be. Hang on a minute. Uh, maybe. Wait a minute. Twenty. Yeah. So I'm coming up on, on my. Yeah. On, Coming up on two years. Two years on Twitch. <coughs> because it was in 2017. Um, I I um, I started to seriously stream when Destiny 2 dropped. Um, I dabbled with streaming before then, but uh, but but it wasn't until 2017 that I really buckled down and said, okay, I'm gonna make myself a schedule. I'm going to really do this. And um, it's been an amazing ride. It's been an amazing ride. But um, it was actually a uh, um, another streamer, a streamer that wound up being my uh, technical editor for Twitch for Dummies, and <clears throat> and he uh, he was talking on the stream one day, and he said, you know, we should have, uh, you know, it's not like we have a Twitch for Dummies book. Maybe we should have one. And I was kind of hemming and hawing at the time about pitching the idea to Wiley because I had just finished. The second edition of podcasting for dummies. Uh, sorry, third edition of podcasting for dummies. And um, and I went, Ugh. and and I and, I, and then I, I had to ask myself the tough question: Who am I, a relatively new streamer, doing? What who am I to write a book about about Twitch? And then I realized, the people who have been doing this, the people who are really hardcore at this, they are so busy streaming that there's a good possibility they may not have the time to, to write. And so I said, well, I know enough to get started. And that's what Twitch for Dummies is. It's the starter's guide. And it's got some, you know, it's got some tips on, on how to grow your channel and how to, how to, you know, uh, promote and uh, promote, promote uh, politely and, uh, and little things like that. So I said, okay, I think I can do this. And, and wow, what a great time. And then the other thing I did was I said, okay, well, let me reach out. Let me reach out to some of these streamers that I respect and some of these streamers that I see growing and, and, and excelling at Twitch. And, uh, and I got to interview some of the most, uh, incredible people. Um, it was, it was it, what started off as, uh, as something that I thought, uh, you know, this will be, this will be a nice little feather in my cap. It wound up being a love letter. It wound up being my love letter to Twitch because this has been a great ride. And, um, during during the writing, I actually went from a morning streamer to an evening streamer, and it was like starting all over again. But 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 getting back getting back into morning streaming, uh, I I feel anyway. I feel like it it, it was a. Uh, I feel like it's a better it's a better fit for me, and that's that's what brings me here. Uh, the other thing that brings me here is this glorious video game right here, Destiny. I love this game. I love this game to bits this is just this is where i feel at home uh today is now t okay so let me explain what's going on with playing the warlock on titan tuesday this is um this is titan tuesday but but i am running the warlock because i am on the grind right now for two titles uh the titles are wayfarer and curse breaker and here's the here's the cold hard facts of both. I'm really close to, to finishing to finishing for both. I really want Curse Breaker, but I wouldn't say no to Wayfair either. Um, however, both uh, both completions are heavily reliant on one thing: RNG. Now, 
If you are uh, waking up this morning with me and you are not a gamer and you don't know what RNG is, oh, allow me to explain what it is. Um, in a nutshell, RNG, the R in RNG stands for random, as in random rolls, random drops. Um, there are activities that you do in game that randomly drop uh, items that you need for uh, completion of certain tasks, right? And um, what I am, um, what I'm doing is I am uh, currently looking for <coughs> one random drop. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm looking for one random drop on Mars. And uh, Unicorn, there he is. Good morning, Unicorn. Thank you very much, by the way, for uh, sw swinging by and hanging out at the podcast. Uh, shared desk. The ladies appreciated it. I appreciated it. Thank you very much. Hopefully today. Injection ring? Okay, I can do that. I can do that. And Yarp Tarp is there, so maybe the two of us together can uh, can make this happen. Because the nice thing about the nice thing about doing this and making the event heroic is we can uh, we can make it heroic. The cabal sure are persistent. I'll give it back. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> All right. Where is he? There he is. <clears throat> Man, he seems to have to kill. Oh, well, starting off the morning, right? I got him, chat. Oh, wrong weapon. Shit. Aw, oh, damn it. I gotta get out of here. Nope. Alright, wherever Yar Jar is, he's. Wherever Yar Jar is, he is out of the picture, apparently. It really does amaze me how many people do not know how to do that. Okay, is anyone else doing this event? Alright, now I'm just gonna drop it. Alright, there's one. This just effing kill. Oh, that just kills me. Tricky. Apparently, I'm the only. Come on, come on, come on. All right. One. And third one. Nope. Oh, I got it. The the reload. The reload. To, I, as much as I love, as much. Oh, great. And the game puts me all the way up here. As much as I freaking love the hammerhead, the reload time is a beast. It is a beast and then some. Oh, okay. Nope, they didn't do it. They didn't make it heroic. Guys, this, is, this doesn't make it heroic. I'm just gonna finish it up, Spike. <coughs> well, I still get a resin stem nonetheless. Ah, oh, that's, that's frustrating. Guys, guys, you, you, you get. There are videos, look them up. How to make an event heroic. Why you make an event heroic. Oh my god. The rig is neutralized. I hate Stop sounding like that gamer. You make it but look this has been like since day one, okay? Our enemies hold valuable tech that could help the war. Grumpy T is grumpy. <laughs> I will say, be, being able to, being able to um, 
to throw a rift and stay in the rift while, while you're burning is, is actually not a bad thing. Man, oh shit, it's that tough to do. Oh, is this guy? Feeling there's going to be, uh, I have a feeling Destiny is going to be busy today because everyone's counting down to um, <clears throat> season of the Drifter chat. Um, meanwhile, I'm, well, I'm grinding, I'm grinding for, I'm grinding for, for, for a collection. Go fig. Well, I mean, honestly, because, because of my schedule, I won't be able to <coughs> get to season the Drifter until tonight, and even then. I don't know if Steve Saylor is going to be up for for uh, is going to be up for um, is going to be up for, uh, for, for for doing for doing Gambit, and uh, and that is perfectly fine. G Gambit Prime isn't going anywhere. Um, one thing I noticed about one thing I have noticed about uh, I've noticed about about. Uh, about Destiny is that some people tend to turn it into a race. It's like you've got to get all the all the cool stuff first, and I get it. They want to make sure that they're they're uh, they've got the meta for uh, certain events and things like that. I guarantee you, they're going to be people that are going to have the full sets of the full suits of armor um, of the new Gambit armor before the end of today, easily before the end of today. But, but these are the people that, that basically grind for hours on end, and and I got nothing but bad respect for them. Nothing but bad respect for them. But um, but but in all fairness, I I don't think I'm not. I'm first off, I'm not that player. Uh, I have a day job. I got to make sure that I'm doing said day job so that I can come back uh, and and do stuff like this with you, you know, because. Um, <clears throat> I like having a roof over my head, and um, part of what, part of the benefits of having a roof over my head is that I can actually come here and, and do this. So, <coughs> there's that. All right, is there a gamer hanging out? <coughs> there's another gamer hanging out in that area. Those um, I don't see anybody else hanging out. Come on. I need scions to appear. There's somebody hanging out there. Oh, or it could be the um, could be the the escalation protocol that was happening that is happening that's slowing down the, <coughs> the spawning over here. These guys over here, they are still spawning. Two more and I'm good. Hey, sir, how are you? Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Hopefully the uh, insomnia isn't kicking you too hard in the butt. <clears throat> Thank you so much for joining me this morning. But yeah, I was really hoping I'd have the I'd have the uh, the new episode of, uh, of 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 the podcast up and running. But man, yesterday just got by me. Now, granted, <clears throat> if you were watching the Discord. I'm on the Warlock this morning. I'm on the Warlock this morning, by the way. Uh, um, yeah, that's what's throwing. That's what's throwing it. It's the, uh, it's, the uh, it's it's the it's the the escalation protocol. That's what's throwing it out. So anyway, <clears throat> the um, come into my bullet. Oh. Um, <coughs> I'm continuing on with the grind, <coughs> um, but uh, but I was about to say yesterday, if you were had, if you had been watching the uh, the, um, the Discord, 
you would have noticed that yes, I uh, I was smoking yesterday. I was smoking uh, smoking all the meats. Um, it was a um, it was a glorious dinner, welcoming my wife back home with uh, I, I I did I did smoked chicken. I did smoked ribs. And then I uh, turned around <clears throat> and surprised her with something that I've been wanting to try, but I, uh, I, I, she kept, she kept uh, styming me uh, this morning. I got woken by the pupper. Oh, pupper! What kind of puppy you got? What kind of puppy you got, Acer? <clears throat> um, but yeah, the, uh, um, um, I, w I, w I welcomed my wife home with uh, smoked meats. Um, <laughs> both, both her and her house guest. And one of the things that she's never let me try that I've always wanted to try smoking. Since she's from New Zealand, I wanted to try smoking lamb because I've never done smoked lamb before. And uh, there was a there was a boneless there was a boneless like uh, boneless leg lamb at um, at Harris Teeter, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm good with this. I should give this a shot. Piece of them. <clears throat> um, where these guys go? All right. So, um, so, uh, so I went on ahead and gave that a shot. And let me tell you something. It was quite the success. Um, in fact, our house guest, after we had finished the podcast, oh, there you go. And, oh, uh, our our house guest. Um, went back for seconds, and she had a choice of we had we had plenty of leftovers. So she had chicken. We had so she had a choice between smoked chicken, smoked ribs, or smoked lamb. She went for the lamb. So I took that as a high confidence. That's something I've never tried before. <coughs> um, she's a little uh, she's a little tweeny. She needs to get the hell out of <laughs> Oh, you saw it on Twitter. I am ashamed to put that lamb seasoning on my chicken and pork. Oh, nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, <clears throat> really good. I I've always found that really good seasoning uh, should be versatile. It should be versatile and sh sh should work on just about anything, that, anything that, that, that works best for you. Um... Uh, one more to do it. <laughs> I feel like there's a, there's a part of me that should feel some sort of some sort of compassion for uh, for these guys <clears throat> when I'm running around and I just see the, the the whole area just littered with cabal bodies. But then I think, well, these are the guys that invaded Earth, and so you know, the sympathy the sympathy card kind of kind of runs out. Little, 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 little uh, lore pont pontification there for you. Okay, let's see this guy. You know, my kid hates science. Oh, she loathes these characters in game. She does. Oh, that was a nice shot. <clears throat> um. Okay. Let's see. Next patrol. Yeah, the joys, of, the joys of grind. Now, I, you know what I may do? I may actually, uh, I may actually give myself a break. And uh, on the Titan, <clears throat> um, uh, I, I, I may pull out the Titan. Uh, just, just to, just to get, I can't remember how in depth I've gone in my life with you, but I actually do pseudo catering for a day job. I cook for different families here locally. Oh, that's cool. Good morning, Marv. Good morning, Marv. How are you? I have nothing but respect for for people who cook professionally. Um, I mean, some people have said, oh, T, you should go pro with your cooking. And I'm like, oh, no, hang on a second. Hang on a second. The reason I don't, the reason I've never taken my, my love of food pro is because I know there's a difference be between the when you, and this is why I have such, such respect for, for caterers, because <clears throat> I, I was a server for, for many years, uh, which is a fancy word for saying I was a waiter. I mean, yeah, I know. It seems pretty, it seems pretty, uh, it seems pretty <clears throat> stereotypical, but I, I was the actor that was a waiter. 
and I get why people say that that's a great gig for an actor because uh, blah, you know, yeah, you're 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 doing this, you're doing that, you're getting the tips, you know, you're walking out with cash money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the one thing they don't mention is when you're a waiter and an actor. As a waiter, you're on your feet all day, and when you go to do a gig at the end of the day, man, you are you are butt tired. You are butt tired. <clears throat> Let's wait for that to be done. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. <clears throat> but um, but the um, um, but I saw how chefs of all different of all different standings would would have to deal with the public, the paying public. You know what I'm saying? And um. I also do it just small time for some fans. It's a nice side money gig. I'm about to be a full-time student again, so I'm just trying to make as much to save up. That's smart. It's funny you should say that too, because I um, <clears throat> I just saw I just saw a uh, a phenomenal um, episode of um, of uh, Patriot Act with Hanan Masa uh, Hanan Masa Hassan Minaj, and the things that he and he did an entire story about about student loans and I don't I, I feel very lucky that I don't I, I, I didn't have I never I've never had to deal with student loans and student debt but it is ridiculous the, the things that the things that people deal with to get you know, to get their student loans paid for I mean it's it really is and like I said I consider myself lucky so anything you can do to save up to make sure you don't have any student debt, I think, is a smart move. There he is. So, um, there you go. You're down. Um, there he is. But, um, um, what, what I was about to say was that, that even, even if it's people that you know and you're catering and doing stuff like that, when you do it and people pay for it, sometimes people can just be real jerks about it. Um, I just enjoy cooking, and I enjoy cooking for, I love cooking for others. But would I want to do it professionally, even on a low-end level? I don't think I would, because I'm afraid of, of some of the demands that, be, that would be put on me. <clears throat> um, I mean... That didn't work. That didn't work as well. But like, I, I, but I will give you. A, I will give you a, a, a favorite memory of mine, Acer, uh, involving food, and uh, has yet to be topped. So, so, um, so the the, the the place was Balticon. It's one of the conventions out out, out east here, and we were uh, science fiction conventions, and we were. Um, my wife and I couldn't get into the con hotel, but like with, within a uh, maybe a block, two blocks away, uh, we were staying at the Marriott. Uh, it was the the Marriott Residence Inn, and the Residence Inn has this big courtyard area with a with a big, with a huge grill. And I um, I said to uh, I said to a few friends, I said, hey, let's have a cookout. I'll um, I'll go on ahead and uh, I'll uh, I'll provide. Uh, you know, some some buns and uh, and you know hot dog rolls and some basics like 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 maybe you know a pound of hamburgers and a, and and, and, a, and, a pack, and a couple of packets of hot dogs. But here's the deal: we'll call it the meet and greet, meet being M E A T, and we will um, <clears throat> we will go on ahead and we'll we'll um we'll we'll have you come on by and it'll be like a kickoff, like an unofficial kickoff event. You know, you basically bring a friend and. Um, you basically bring a friend and and uh, bring something for you and bring something for someone you haven't met. <clears throat> so we did this meet and greet, and um, you know I just thought I just thought a few people would show up, no big deal, right? We filled that courtyard with a hundred people, and it was just, and some of these people were just random people who had heard somebody's having a cookout. <clears throat> And I stayed at that grill for four hours, and someone said, "See, don't you want a break? You know, you've been you've been at this for a long time. Maybe you should, you know, maybe you should re relax." And I got to use this great line from Star Trek, where uh, Kirk says to Kirk says to Kirk finds Scotty reading technical journals in the mess hall, 
and he says to Scotty, he goes, technical journals. Scotty, don't you ever relax? And Scotty says, I am relaxing. So I got to use that line at this, at this cookout. We did it. Um, we did it uh, another year and we had 150 people turn out and it was just so much damn fun. It was me behind this, this grill for four hours and I just, I just, oh, it was great. Oh man. Oh, oh I'm sorry, dude. Um, <clears throat> wow, wow. Permitted term, crazy Christian. That was what, really? That was what was, that's what, that red flag to this? That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, Marv. Marv, Marv, Marv. Marv, yeah, you, you know what, Mar you know what, Marv? I do smell. I smell of smoked meats. That's what I smell. <laughs> I smell of smoked meats. I don't know why the term crazy Christian got flagged by my, by my Twitch. That's weird, but okay. All right. Um, yeah, um, you know, it's funny. <clears throat> side, side note. I almost said sidebar. Side note. You know, I, I'm, I'm Christian. Uh, very proudly so. But when it comes to going to a Christian college, um, I looked at some of them. Let's get a better understanding <clears throat> of and I was like... Eh, no, I don't think so. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, that's what I wanted to do this. Some of it had to do with the fact that I wanted to study theater. And um, I saw some of the still shots of, uh, of theater... Of theater... Um, of theater productions they were doing. And I was like, uh, no. That looks one step above high school. i just not impressed. I also didn't care for the fact that they were doing things like they were combining theater with uh, the communications department, which is two different things entirely. Um, there was also uh, yeah, there, was just, there was just some hinky things about Christian colleges just made me go, this this isn't for me. This this is not this is not my jam. Um, and then I met some people that, 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 that uh, I met some people that, that, that went to um, actually one of the Christian colleges in, in our area. Liberty University, and I want to tell you something about Liberty. This this, this relative mine from Liberty University. Let me just say, I'm, he's lucky that I actually practice and walk in Christ, because he was saying some stuff about the shutdown that was a, that was making me ready to ex explode, just ready to explode. Because he never held a job in government. He didn't live in Washington D.C. And his message about the shutdown and his thoughts about the shutdown were basically just regurgitations of, 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 of the asshats on Fox News who had no effing clue what was going on with the government shutdown. And I know because I was affected by the government shutdown. Um, <clears throat> uh, Liberty is close-ish. It's, it's in the same state. <clears throat> but... Um, the one I went to was like three steps away from being a cult. It was just a mess. You know, uh, but the point is you got out. You got out. Um, I mean, that was one of the things that, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a joke uh, with, with my wife and I. We, we were, I could use enemy materials for my <clears throat> so we, um, so we attend this, uh, this, this fantastic Episcopalian church in, um, in, uh, in Manassas. And we were, uh, we were, we were, we were getting to know the uh, the, 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 the the head uh, the head priest, and she sat us down. Her name her name is Vinny. Uh, her name is Vinny, and she sat us down. And she said, uh, "So I just want to know a little bit about your your past, you know, about your past with churches." So with, with Pip, it took um, it took about fifteen minutes to to you know say. Well, this is my past, and this is this is my past dealings with churches. And this is this is what you know. This, this is my experience with the church. Then it was my turn, and um, we were there for roughly three hours. I have a very complicated relationship when it comes to not not necessarily Christianity, religion, and um, and the experience that I've had 
Uh, yeah, it was it was it was something of a. I didn't realize how much of a mess it was until um, and this is this is as re this is recent. This is recent. There's been um, to, to give you an idea, um, the when my when my uh, when when my wife when my first wife passed away, um, at the funeral. Oh, I should put in this caveat. Put in this caveat. Um, and I don't know what it is about Twitch that just makes me think, yeah, this is fine to share. But, yeah, it just is what it is. This is also my personality. So, hi, welcome to my stream. So, um, before my wife passed away, uh, my first wife passed away, I should say. Before my first wife passed away, we were separated. We were separated. So, you know, there were some, there were some, there were some tough things that we were trying to work through. But we were separated. Well, the thing is, um, the thing is, my wife uh, and I were not only separated, but she was also struggling really hard. She, because of our separation, I think she was taking some steps to address her her manic depression, which she kind of stepped away from monitoring and keeping it keeping tabs on. Um, and when you have manic depression, I mean, I know I I don't know a lot about manic depression and about uh, the different, the different, um, uh, different, uh, that's what I'm looking for. I'm a writer and I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on words. Hang on a minute. Coffee should help. Um, the different, the different degrees of depression, but she was getting help and I was, I was happy about that. And then of course, sadly, she, she passed away at the funeral. The, the 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 head of the church it is shit it is absolute shit and it can do it can do a lot of it it, it can really screw up relationships um but here was the thing that happened my wife one of the things that i will say about her was that she never used her manic depression as a crutch she kept it very close to the vest even with me when we first, when we were first dating, she said, I don't, I don't, I, you know, this is a very personal thing, but I just want you to know that it's happening, T. I want you to know that, that it's there, and I'm dealing with it as best as I can. And I said, okay. And she, but she never, she would never use it as her, as her crutch or an excuse for something. Well, she wrote, uh, during the, during the, during the early days of separation, she wrote this very heartfelt letter to the head of uh, the, the, the church that that we were that we were attending at the time, talking about how uh, you know she was she you know she knew that the depression was was really taking a toll on her, but that she was going to uh, do what she do what she could to, to rise above it, and, and uh, it was a very passionate very passionate email to the church. About how she was finding strength with the church, and how she was she was planning to you know, rise above even this dark time that she was going through with our separation. I know that she wrote this because the priest read this email, read this email to the congregation who had shown up for her funeral. At one point, a friend of mine leaned over, to, and I, I found this out afterwards. A friend of mine leaned over to another friend of mine and said, "Should you be hearing this email?" Because it was obvious, this was not an email for public consumption. But according to the priest, who didn't tell me that he was going to read this, by the way. Who didn't tell me he was going to read this. Um, it was basically one of these, uh, these emails that just showed how much pain Natalie was in. And I, I, was, I was mortified. And even at, and when I got home that day, a couple of my friends came with me, and they um, they all said the same thing. They were like, they were like, what was up with that email? And I said, well, this was why I stopped going to the church. I that's why I stopped going to the church because this was the kind of this was some of the some of the weird shit that they were pulling. And even then, um, even Serena, um, she said to me, she was saying to me, she said, I don't like the church that uh, that. Because it was also the church where my where my mother my then mother in law was going to, she said, um, she said, uh, she said I didn't like that church that that, 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 that you know Grammy goes to. It's, it's pretty much a cult, and I'm you know she's she's a thirteen year old telling me this. I'm like holy shit, um, and uh, yeah, it was that was a that was a, and I'm no I'm not I'm 
I'm not kidding, Acer. Uh, yeah, that happened. And <clears throat> and it's ridiculous that that, that, would, that that happened. But, you know, it's funny because the... Uh, and that's what I think is the difference between Christianity and religion. Um, I think with religion, you, um, you put on a good front. With Christianity, you actually, you actually work to, you actually work to, um, uh, you actually work to accept, to, to accept love and, uh, and really walk in, you know, walk in the light, as it were. Um, and the way I summarize the church, uh, that I'm going to now, um, the, the Episcopalian church, my um, my priest Vinny gave this really intense speech about love around the time of the shooting at the Orlando nightclub um, a few years ago, and and my and my and she even said she said I'm a gun owner, I'm a gun owner, and, uh, and she says but let's let's get something straight, I'm all for gun safety. It's needed. It's essential. We can't be living like this. And you can't, you, you, and you definitely, um, you definitely cannot uh, justify what you do by using the word of God. Because I got news for you. Do you know how many times, uh, and this is, I mean, she is, she is just ramped up. And she's like, do you know how many times uh, Jesus condemned homosexuals in the New Testament? None. And she was, and you know, we're all sitting in the congregation going, whoa. And then she took a pause, and then she said, and man, I'll never forget these words. She went, God loves everyone, no exceptions. And you just heard the entire congregation go, Whew. And uh, I love this priest so much. If you read the third book in our series, Dawn's Early Light, there is a bounty hunter priest that we have in the book. It's her, and she knows it. And I... <laughs> In fact, I, I sent her the first scene with her in it, and I said, before I before I submit this to the publisher, I wanted to make sure you were okay with this before I move forward. And I, I uh, and and uh, I sent her the scene, and I didn't hear anything reply. And I'm like, oh crap, she hates it, she hates it, she hates it. And then there's one there's one service we were Pip and I were running late. We come in and and um and Vinny is standing in the back in her robes next to Stuart. He's our other priest. And as we're trying, as we're going to get our seat, she stops me. She gets stopped. She stops me. And she says, I just want you to know, T, I got two six shooters under here. And I turned to Pip and I said, I think she liked the scene. So, <laughs> so she wound up, she wound up in book three and she loves being in book three. She loves it. All right. So, so yeah, long story short, um, you know, if they kicked you out, um, maybe it's, a, you know, it was probably a blessing. And um, you're probably better off. Um, I would I would tell people, you know, who are looking at colleges, I'd be like, the places you want to think twice about colleges, um, Christian colleges are one, and the other one to be a little wary of are any colleges that are for profit, like University of Phoenix, uh, Stratford University. You got to be real careful about those uh, to a point where you should probably avoid them. I used to work in that industry. I don't miss it. I do not miss it. I do not miss it one bit. Um, it was for-profit universities, and it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I do not care for Betsy Davos in any way. She's the woman that runs our, um, our uh, Department of Education. I'm not a fan of Davos at all because um, she's a big proponent, big supporter, and I believe she's also an investor in uh, for-profit colleges. And for-profit colleges have one, they have one, one agenda, one function. And, I, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience. They want to, they want to keep you in school. Um, it's a, the way to look at, at for-profit colleges is the same way to look, oh, that's why, that's why I'm saying it, because I still have this, uh, I still have to finish this up. Um, you want, there we go. I was like, why isn't this guy, why didn't he just drop the hive tablet? Oh, he just did so anyway, um, you got to look at you got to look at at um, at, at uh, for-profit colleges the way you look at um, places like Weight Watchers. 
Um, Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers, uh, you know, Slim Fast, all these different places, all these different, um, these, di these different, uh, um, diets, they, they, they don't necessarily, they want you to lose, they want you to lose weight, but they don't want you to keep it off, that's the thing, they don't want you to eliminate all high food. Um, they don't, they don't necessarily want you to, uh, they don't necessarily want you to keep the weight off. You know, they think it's great that you, that you lose weight because, you know, that way you can, you can tell people, yeah, on this plan I lost 20 pounds and stuff like that. Sure, that's great. But they don't necessarily want you to keep, they don't want you to keep the weight off because the thing about keeping the weight off, you don't need them anymore. So... So they they want you to be reliant on their food. They want you to be reliant on their their stuff, right? Well, for-profit colleges are the same way. You know, they, they and I've seen them do this tactic where they say stuff like, "Well, you know, yeah, you, you're about to get your associates, but look at how close you are to you. Look at how close you are to you." Whoa! Let me help this dude out. Uh, have some. Oh, are you kidding me? Did they disappear before? Oh, jerks! Jerks. Uh, anyway, um, um, they they'll say they'll say, well, yeah, you're you you've got your associate's degree, but look at how close you are to your bachelor's degree. Go on ahead and get that, and then, oh, okay, so you got your bachelor's degree. Well, guess what? We have a master's program, and you know a master's program would work really well for you. That. It, it is so effing slim shady, and um, and it's not always the best education. It is not always the best education. Now, I, now, I would say if you had a choice between going to a community college and going to uh, a for-profit college, go to the community college. Go to the community college. Um, <laughs> is anyone not born with a silver spoon a fan of Devon? Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I still remember a, um, I still remember a, uh, um, uh, one of the last things I did for the last, um, for the last for-profit university that I worked for, one of the last things I did was I made a banner, uh, for our website, and it was a banner that featured Betsy Davos, and it was talking about, all oh, how this, this, uh, this great, this great policy that she was uh, passing that was going to be great for stress to university students. Um, that was half right. It was great for Stratford, but not necessarily the students. It was more. It was more about. It was more for the business. And um, I mean, ugh, after I made that, after I made that banner, I was just thrilled that I was leaving. And it was funny because because um, the. Um, it was funny because a, a friend of mine said, just recently, we're talking about like as recently as last week, told me, you know, T, I'm really glad you got out of that business because he just looked at me, he shook his head, he was like, it was so slimy, and I said, and he said, I know you had a job to do, but dude, and I said, why do you think I didn't brag about my day job? I, I, I didn't talk about my day job at all with friends because I did not want to rope them into this. Um, so yeah, so... Um, so Acer, I think um, I think whatever situation you are in, you are best out of it. So so you got that going for you, and um, and that, it is that, that, that's a rough thing to go through. Hang on. It's a rough thing to go through. Just, these guys need to sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down.
There you go. If there are any guardians on this channel, oh, a war set just cool. crashed in your vicinity. I can get your help recovering its data. Yep, yep, yep. On the way, darling, on the way. Now this one's a little easier to make heroic and and and, and to do. Okay, but I got I got somebody here. Uh, right, let's do this. Alright, chums, let's do this. Careful out there, Guardian. So, um, so I don't know if Drafty is in, is in, uh, is in stream. But Drafty gave me some, uh, some, some pretty, some pretty solid advice on a way to pursue this, uh, this Polaris Lens Catalyst. Um, the perfect fifth shot. He was saying, uh, about going into the Leviathan and, uh, and just landing perfect fifths, you know, you know, everywhere. But here's my question about that. Was it the opening where the where the guys are lined up? Is that is that where is that where that strat is supposed to be? Is you know in the, in the opening with all the guards? Is that where he's talking about landing the perfect pitch shots? I'm just trying to figure out if he meant if he meant uh, inside if he meant if he meant inside the um, inside the Leviathan itself, or if he meant. Uh, or if he meant um, the, uh, the the area of the Leviathan where where they're you know, the opening where everybody's there. The Trying to I'm, I I know he mentioned it and and I, I I understood what it was at the time. But at present I cannot remember I cannot remember what he said. So if any if Drafty if you're out there or if anybody in chat knows the strat, uh, remind me of where in the Leviathan. Uh, is the best place to take care of the perfect fit. Oh, first encounter room. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So where, so, so where, where spawn, where ads spawn, spawn. See, I was concerned because I thought, I thought that, um, and there you go. We'll take care of it. Because I thought, um, it would be, I, wow. Because I thought it would be the other way around. I, I, I didn't think, uh, I think it would be that one because those those guys tend to be very, those guys seem to be tough as shoe leather. Where you have the keys only because it spawns them. So those, so those guys will fall on the perfect fit. Okay, because I was just afraid that if they explode, it's not enough. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not enough to. It, it isn't. It, yeah, I was just worried that it wouldn't be enough to um, um, uh, to take them out because those because those guys are so tough. But okay, I'm, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot. Great job out there. I'm willing to give that a shot. I haven't been on. I haven't been on the Leviathan in a long time either. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Thanks, Acer. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, patrols. Alright, let's just see. Where's the... Oh! That's right, I just accepted the patrol. And now it's, um... This one. <laughs> Tell me about it, Marv. Um, I was saying, Marv, that, that one of the last things I had to do at Stratford University... Fuck yo, boat Biatch. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, yeah, the, um... You know, the week that that happened, that was when I was doing this assignment for, uh, for, for my day job. So my, 
So at one time, my day job, Mark, before it was, um, this might have been before you and I met. I was working at uh, a place called Stratford University, and they were a, uh, they, they were and they are a for-profit university. And one of the last things I did for that uh, fly-by-night, uh, that fly-by-night university was um, they, um, they wanted me to make a banner for the website uh, praising Betsy Davos for helping us get, get our accreditation back. So let me give you a little little inside scoop on uh, what was going on there. So basically, we were um, <clears throat> we were about to lose our accreditation, and all schools have accreditation, right? I'm not sure how easy or hard it would be. I've yet to do a Leviathan run. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's, it's worth looking into. Uh, I'm in a clan. They didn't help me do one single event. Oh wow. That goes back to some of the stuff we were talking about with, uh, with toxic clans back in the day. But anyway, um, but going back to, um, so, yeah, but, but so what, what was, um, what, uh, so, so you have this thing called accreditation, and it basically is the government's approval that, yes, you are an actual university, that your university, re you know, s meets certain requirements and that you, um, you know, you're you're on the up and up, and you're not some fly-by-night industry uh, out to scam people of money. You're not Bob's College or something like that. You're you're actually a university with you know standards and with, uh, with curriculums and, and all that stuff, right? All right. Well, we were about to lose that at Stratford. We were about to lose that, and and. And it was a big deal. And the reason why we were about to lose it was because in the Obama administration, the Department of Education was run by someone who was, well, shocker, they were in the education industry. And they knew, uh, they had a lot of knowledge of what colleges should be. And they took a long look at schools like DeVry, ITT Tech, all these different places. Trump University, there's another one. And um, we're basically shutting these universities down. Because these universities were were, were, were pro they 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 had you know they had a bare minimum, but it was not about the students. It was a business. It was a business. Well, then um, the Trump administration kicks in. Betsy Davos shows up, and she really has become sort of the savior of the um, of the uh, she's the savior of. Uh, of of, of these these kinds of universities. You don't want to stick your head up before I lose this bullet. Uh, damn it. And um, and one of the one of the first things Betsy Davos did, I guess it was part of her deal for getting this job, but she um, she reversed a lot of those policies. That, that 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 cracked down on uh, universities being so uh, predatory, and and Marv, one of the last things I had to do at Stratford was make a banner with her face on it. This is for our website, and it, it was her face on it, and it was like Stratford University. Now you know, you know, thanks Betsy Davos, the Department of Education. For making, for helping it, for helping them get keep their accreditation, blah blah blah, and I made that banner, and I just said, if this is the last thing I do here, God love it, I'm out, I am so effing out, and um, and it isn't, it isn't, uh, it isn't ironic uh, or or unexpected. The uh, the their social their social media after I left just fell apart like a house of cards. Um, I had been made redundant, and so they they had hired some some you know hotshot uh, agency, and they were going to outsource all of their social media. And I went, well, good luck, because I had come in, and their their social media was just all over the ballpark. And I came in, and I gave it direction. I left, and man, their social media just it was a mess. I mean, 
And to give you an idea, even my even my wife, even my wife was like was like, yeah, see, I've been poking my head in just to see what it's like, and it's bad. I said, yeah, I know, I know, it's bad. You got some serious PS4 hiding skills because you're not showing up on any of your friends or clans list. Oh, right, because uh, I was running private. I was running private this morning, Obi, but thank you for popping in the chat just to see where I was. Um, right. Oh, wow. That last chest was... Wow, I didn't realize that. <laughs> huh. No, 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 it wasn't, it, it wasn't that, it, it's me, it's me, I, I was running, I was running in private because, um, when I'm off stream, Acer, I tend to, um, I, t I tend to go into private if I'm doing something that I know isn't, isn't socially driven, i.e. the grind, you know, I just figured, yeah, I'll come on for an hour and I'll grind and I'll do this and I'll do that, um, but uh, I mean, Obi's been very gracious. I'm, I'm, as as he has been, as you, as as you've seen him do in this in the stream. Obi basically joins me on stream around uh, this time, if not a little earlier, and uh, he's helping me grind for. Uh, he's helping me grind for. Um, he's helping me grind for for this by by going on patrols while I go and and hunt out the frequencies. But because the, the grind is not necessarily the most compelling content, um, I just, and, and also because I didn't want to, uh, you know, I didn't want to um, have people say, hey, T, let's go on a strike. Hey, T, let's, well, I'm like, look, I'm going to go private because I really want to just try to get this grind out. I really just want, I really want, once I, once I get this, 